and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube. If you're watching this video later on over there, for some more mono black aggro. So we uh, first played this deck yesterday and it went pretty well. Uh, I think we went three and two, but the deck felt pretty good and I wanted to try it out some more. At the end of the video, we talked about some changes to make to the sideboard and we have those changes um, updated here today. And the other thing is we played uh, we played the Orzhov Enforcer, which is a 1-2 Death Touch uh, with Afterlife in our 2-drop slot. And a lot of times we were just attacking for 1 and it wasn't really getting the job done. We still don't know what I want to do with this 2-drop slot yet. It's likely the Graveyard Marshal should be the card here. But I know that I know basically how good Graveyard Marshal is. Played a good amount of Graveyard Marshal in like Zombies decks and stuff. Um, this card I've played a, a good amount. So I know... What Graveyard Marshall's doing. The card that I haven't, like, basically hardly ever played is Dire Fleet Poisoner here. And so I'm just going with the four Dire Fleet Poisoners in this league because I, I want to, you know, have a good chance of drawing drawing them and seeing if they're good. In the late game, this is a card that can just come in and, and block anything at instant speed and basically act as, like, another cast down against non flying creatures that are attacking me. In the early game, uh, maybe our opponents don't want to block it because it has death touch kind of thing. And like, you know, we want to be able to get in damage early and trigger um, Spectacle to be able to play Spawn of Mayhem and Drill Bit. And hopefully the Poisoner being a death toucher, maybe they just don't want to attack or maybe they don't want to block it and we get in for damage. Where if we're playing the Graveyard Marshal being a 3-2, that's like a card that people want to block because they don't want the Graveyard Marshal to sit around and be able to activate and everything. Um... So, I want to go ahead and try this, this Dire Fleet Poisoner card here, and see how it works. Um, Vicious Conquistador, it does, it does trigger Spectacle even when it's blocked, because, you know, it has the attack trigger there. But the, the problem is, is, it's really hard for Vicious Conquistador to actually trade with a card. Even though it's, it's, Conquistador is really good when your opponent's only playing removal. But if your opponent's playing creatures at all, it's really hard for Vicious Conquistador to, to trade with anything being a 1-2 uh, when they have creatures. So because of that, I don't really want it kind of thing. So let's let's try this Dire Fleet Poisoner and see how it works. Last, last time I was definitely impressed by Dreadshade and Spawn of Mayhem. Th these are the backbone of our deck. Definitely pretty impressive. And, and I like Dreadshade quite a bit. I think Dreadshade is pretty underrated, so... I'm excited to play some more Dreadshade. Here we go, Mono Black Aggro. What's the plan for Vine Mare? Just attack them. Kill them. Kill them before Vine Mare kills you. Also. Basically, nobody plays Vine Mare, so I don't think I don't think that's a card that you really need to have a plan for. Maybe we make them discard it with Drill Bit. There you go. There's a plan. Yeah, we can thought seize it. So right now, we're wanting to draw any of our three drops. Dreadshade, Spawn of Mayhem, even Midnight Reaper would be a good one. The three drops are what we're looking to draw right now. I guess Dreadshade we don't get to cast because of this Stronghold. We talked about this last time too. We played against Soltai our, our last match. Soltai is going to be our, our very worst matchup. It's it's not one we're going to win very often. And you know, you usually have like a bad matchup somewhere. I think this is our worst one. This is the the one matchup I don't want to play against.
Yeah, Priest of the Forgotten Gods is another option for that two mana slot. This this aggro deck that I'm playing here though just doesn't have very many creatures that we want to sacrifice. Where's this other swamp? Where is this other swamp at? I wouldn't even mind Chupacabraing that land war elf here. Back up to 17, man. Crisis is good. Okay. Reaper down, but Dread Shades can take over. We'll see if our opponent has more removal. Hopefully not. Cool. Because Dread Shades can take over. This Cabal Stronghold. Looking real bad. Thanks, Baloney Pony. So let's wait. Undo. See, like, Dread Shade's basically just the Abyss. Ooh, they're just not blocking? Okay, well, we'll let this one hit him. Oh, wait, that adds four. Oh, I could have pumped once. Dang it, I could have pumped once to ten. It doesn't matter. These are... I guess it does kind of matter a little bit. Uh, the Z key on your keyboard is the command for undoing something. Alright, well they bricked. After those crises, just drew a bunch of wild growth walkers and lands. <laughs> Z for Zari. I didn't mean to. Alright, we can get some walk the planks, cast downs, another choop, eldest reborns. Um I don't know, do I want Eldest Reborns? Maybe not. Spyglass for Vivian. That's a lot of stuff. A lot of removal spells. Oh, and Little Vraska. True. You can just hostage take her at the spyglass. I kind of want to just take out the one drops. They just get outclassed very easily. No, Secret Squire. Get these gutter bones back in. And... Blood fast, get some card draw. Now the other Midnight Reaper. 
<laughs> Phone is playing mono bricks. Yeah, I could see bringing duress. We have the uh, drill bit still. Kill that. Yeah, me too, Aduriel. I'm I'm I can't wait for more story from War of the Spark to just kinda of find out what happens and everything. Um There is a book we were talking about this actually earlier in the stream. There's a book that's being released uh that I actually ordered pre ordered on Amazon that's like being released later on this month, like basically when the set comes out. And I'm looking forward to getting that one in the mail. I don't think I'm going to draw 10 cards off the new Niv, but I'm going to draw a lot. I think I think the new Niv is pretty underrated. I don't... Uh, yeah, I, I think it's good. I think it's a, a good card, and... I'm not scared away by it costing... By being five colors. I'm excited to play it. So if I just attack with gutter bones, I think my opponent blocks. Dang it. They still block. I was hoping with the Midnight Reaper first they wouldn't block. Because I wanted to drill bit here. That's a good question. Is niv being an avatar more or less powerful than being Planeswalker? It's a good question. And I don't know. Hmm. So I want the Hostage Taker to be dead. Because I'm going to cast... Well, I guess I need more mana to cast the Eldest, the Eldest Reborn. There we go. Because, yeah, if I cast the Eldest Reborn here, they sack Gutter Bones, but then I get this starting, and I want the Hostage Taker in the graveyard. But just basically playing this Reborn because, you know, it takes a little bit. I want to get this started. We're gonna need to choop that crasis later. Oh, find finality? Ugh. That is gross. Ugh, that's gross. Alright, so we'll get that hostage shaker back over there, and we'll poison her here. Poisoner is a really good 2-drop here. You know, instant speed so it doesn't get killed by Chupacabra, gets to kill the 4-3. Okay, and they did play the Krasis. Alright, come on, draw Swamp. Draw Swamp. Swamp, 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 Swamp. I don't know, like, basically the swamp's just more mana. Dang. Alright, so take the... Take the Krasis. I don't get to cast it for as much. Five. It would have been six, seven, eight. Ah, we would have had... It would uh, have been a six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so we would have had... would have been able to cast it for eight, gain four, draw four. 
Oh no, we would only be able to cast it for seven. Would have gained three. So this is five, six, seven. So we go Crasis for five. That's not bad. So it would have been Crasis for seven if we would have drawn this one first. Alright, that'll do. Vujas, why do you hate best of one ranked? That's not a that's not an accurate statement. I don't I don't really hate things. And it's still magic. I don't hate best of one ranked. I do believe the experience is inferior to best of three though. I don't think my opponent's attacking in here. So basically, the problem with best of one is when you only play one game, you are very, very highly incentivized to play something on the complete ends of the spectrum. A hyper-aggressive deck. A hyper-control deck. Those kind of strategies are going to be... Uh, better because when you're playing like a hyper control deck you blink removal spells from the opponent or if you're um, you know trying to be as like basically that's what you're trying to do try to be as fast as possible or defend against the fastest possible decks kind of like that like playing mid-range decks where you can be versatile where you can be like defensive against aggro or be aggressive against control you just don't have you just can't do both of those in one singular game because you have some cards that are good against aggro, some cards that are good against control. And so it just it basically just boils down to just playing aggro or control, and you can't really do anything else in best of one. And that's people are saying oh man i'm tired of esper or tired of mono red like speaking of best of one i can't wait till like those things rotate out well it's just going to be the exact same like throughout time it's going to be just some very linear aggro deck and some linear control deck like what those colors are could be could switch but those are really just like the things that are um going to be winning a best of one How much does this thing attack for? So that's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It attacks for 14? Gosh, that's so much. That is so much. Yeah, the same kind of thing with, like, the Nexus decks that were in Best of One before. Nexus decks were, like, you know, I say, like, Hyper Control, but it's linear, or, like, the Linear Control deck is the same thing. It's, like, the, the Linear Combo deck that just ignores the opponent. Like, with Best of One, you just want to ignore your the opponent, basically, um, and do the, like, the best thing possible with, you know, like, 
<clears throat> with like that those kind of linear combo decks too. That could be another part. So if I cast down the Chupacabra, I do not force them to block with the... I'm not attacking for lethal there. I'm, I'm not forcing them to block with the Carnage Tyrant. If... Basically, my plan was them not actually blocking, because I was not forcing them to block. I was not attacking for lethal. So my plan was them to not block, and then be able to cast down the next turn when they're not expecting... You know, not expecting that cast down, like, on end step and on tap, and then, you know, attack for lethal with the thing. The stronghold is really good sometimes, but there's been a couple of times here where this stronghold has been pretty annoying for us. I want to see if we find another swamp or something here. I don't think I need to throw down this poisoner right now. It's not a bad card. It's not really a land, though. I think I'll keep this. Thanks, Horatio. Yeah, this deck's pretty sweet. We we just beat Sultai, I just realized. We talked about how Sultai is our worst matchup. We actually just beat Sultai, which is our worst matchup. Maybe we should just be getting rid of this drill bit. Yeah, I should, I should ditch the drill bit. I can't even cast the Dreadshade in our hand. I... That's... I should have put that in the graveyard. Abzian. Abzan. What you got over here? Mortify Resplendent Angel. We still draw the land and can start playing Spawn of Mayhems. Hey KZ, thank you. I think Dreadshade's more valuable than Spawn of Mayhem, honestly. Well, they drew Find Finality. That's not bad. At least they just were looking at their graveyard. Splendid Angel is going to be annoying. Draw some removal. Let's draw Chupacabra. Chupacabra. Got her bones.
I mean, either way, they're getting their angel. It's not like if we block, we're preventing them from gaining five and getting their angel. So we're just going to take it. It makes it easier for Spawn of Mayhem to start growing, which is something we need. No land. Dang it. Ugh. And then, hmm. All right, walk the plank. Cast down doesn't kill Lyra. Get the other troop in there too. Probably want these Elder Reborns too. <laughs> so made the really big mistake of keeping the drill bit. That that ended up being a, a big mistake there. Guess I'm just kind of sideboarding against this like it's Sultai. I think it's like yeah, cast down is just not good against Lyra. Man, Sarah for the scales is going to be like impossible. Yeah, and they have Vivian. Probably Tristani. This is going to be a tough matchup for us. Just anti... You know, just angel, a bunch of angels. Anti-aggro. It's going to be tough for us. Yes, Stronghold's not a, a land you want early at all. We've seen it. Like, you can't cast Dreadshade with Stronghold. And Stronghold doesn't add mana for you until after you have... Um, five. See if you have four lands. Yeah, it doesn't, because it just adds four for four mana. So it's it's only until you have five swamps in play until Stronghold actually adds more mana for you. And a twenty-three land deck. It's kind of hard to have five swamps in Stronghold. Happens sometimes, but. I don't know, I kind of like these Poisoners less. Like, their their important creatures are probably going to be flying. Actually, let's get the Squires in there instead of Poisoners. Like, they're, they're things that we want to trade with are Flyers. Guess I needed to take Mortify last turn. Not Resplendent Angel. Wait a little bit before we cast this drill bit. I, I want to hit Angels. them. Another Midnight Reaper. Yeah, that consumes pretty nasty also. I, I do some best of one real smorf whenever if somebody donates for like a, a donation deck for best of one. That's the only time I play uh, best of one currently.
And we're looking pretty strong here. We got our very good three drops. I actually had never seen that animation, I don't think either. Maybe not. Don't play Walk the Plank very much. <clears throat> but yeah, I wasn't aware that it had animation either. Finality could be a problem. They're keeping that on top. So I, I probably need to keep two mana up for Dreadshade to be able to survive a finality. I don't know. This finality is like going to kill my opponent. I don't know what they're planning to do with that. Find finality. Hey, what's up, DJ Polly B? If I block two, No, not a short stream. We played another league earlier before these, but the computer died during it, so it just updated with the three after that. So, like, it says right now that I've only been streaming for three hours, even though I've been streaming for, like, four hours, 15 minutes. It's been normal stream today. <sighs> that Consecrate card is really good. A bunch of X2s. These Elder Reborns actually doing something that are going to be kind of tough. A bunch of Branch Walkers and... Hmm. Considering putting in a couple of Duresses... Instead of the Reborns. I don't know. This is going to be a hard game to win on the, on the draw here. I feel like Direfleet Poisoner just trades with Merfolk Branchwalker, and that's not something I'm thrilled about. I don't know. I kind of want this re Reborn. Boots have you seen anything from War of the Spark that would make the mono black deck any better? I'm I'm not sure, honestly. I've I've looked at, you know, like, basically... I've looked at, like, the War of the Spark cards right now, but I haven't really... You know, I'd have to like kind of go through it and and really look. It's basically the it's the two drop slot that's the weakest in this deck, and so it's whether it's whether War of the Spark provides any good two drop is the that's the biggest thing that the deck's missing. And no, I don't think Citadel Bolus is 
a playable card in this deck. It's already going to be tough to win. I don't think we're winning on five cards against seven. It's already a tough matchup for us. Eternal Taskmaster, a two, good two drop. So what do we got? Two mana, two, three, ETB tapped. Whenever it attacks, you may pay three if you do return to our creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, that's not a bad one. That's not too bad at all. That's not too bad at all. Liliana Dreadhorde General it does cost six mana, but that card's great. And honestly... God Eternal Bantu may play a role in the deck somewhere. I mean, these these God cards are just awesome. You know, five mana, five six menace, ETB, sack some permanents, draw some cards. That could play some a role. Uh, Dreadhorde Invasion, I don't love, but maybe as a sideboard card against like Esper Control, maybe. Dreadhorde Invasion could do something there. <laughs> Question is, can you explain how niv Mizzet Reborn works? For the life of me, I can't figure out what the card text does. There are... There's been, like, a handful of cards where I have to go back and reread it a few times because the it feels like the, and then like after you understand it, you're like, okay, but like the, the wording and like the phrasing is, seems off. Like it's, it's kind of difficult, but basically, all right. So Niv Mizzet Reborn, what it does is whenever it enters the battlefield, you look at the t top 10 cards of your library and it says for each color pair. And so that means like this would be a green black card. So you can, you can reveal multicolor cards of all 10 of the guilds and you can put one of each in your hand um you know however many you want to reveal so you, know, you could have hit a find finality would be a golgari card um and so on teferi would be an azorius card and you can you can reveal as many of those as possible and draw that many Yeah, it has to be color pairs, correct. Can't be one color, can't be three colors. And you can't re you can't reveal like four different Azorius cards. You get like one Azorius, one Golgari, and so on. It's it's a guilds matter card. It's like Niv Mizzet is all the guilds. Have anything for Alira. Yeah, I don't. I don't think hitting all five colors is going to be as difficult as some people think. You know, the obvious card is Chromatic Lantern to help with that. I I think Niv Miss. It's a pretty pretty good. I think it's underrated. That's that looks to be a fun card to play too. That's going to be like. But that may be a card that I'm playing the very first day whenever it comes out here on Arena, like building a niv Mizzet deck.
I'm glad it's Seraph and not... You know, at least it's something that dies to a cast down. It's not Lyra. Once we have all the cards, I'm planning on making some different decks. I don't know how many. Maybe five or ten decks. And... Yeah, you know, like there'll be decks that we'll be playing on stream, but also uh, before that, between whenever we have all the cards and it and it comes out on arena. Um, plan on making those decks and you know sending them out to the subscribers um, through how I have like the button here to send send email to subscribers. Plan on like that, and, and maybe another one or two different other things with War of the Spark uh, content. Planning on making some of that for y'all. All right, they kept one one card on top. It's probably a good one. I wish we could give Dreadshade Trample. So hyped to try Abzan Bugler Priest with new Lily and Eternal Taskmaster. Yeah. There are so many good cards in this set. I think standard's going to change quite a bit. Um, these cards are just real powerful, and I, I think that there could be a big impact from War of the Spark, and Standard may not look like it does now afterwards. Usually a seventh set in Standard doesn't shake up Standard uh, too much, but I could see this being an exception. Yeah, there's so many planeswalkers that you can build around. It's It's crazy. What? They're not just taking lethal, are they? So so they have mortify in hand? That's unfortunate. That's really bad for me. Looks like we're losing this one. But we put up a good fight for mulliganing to four and everything. Um, definitely knew that this was going to be a tough one to win. And I'm pretty happy for how our deck uh, performed. Especially for all these cards our opponents had and the find finality. Like the find to get them back. A find on our side would be a good card to have. Not beating Sarah for the scales again. Maybe we should have a find or two in the board. Thought about that card. Do I think Abzan midrange is good? I think it's very good against aggro. I am like I I don't think I don't think Abzan is better than Soltai. I think it I think that's um, a problem with Abzan is I don't think it's better than Sultai. And for mid-range mirrors, but I think Abzan is...
probably better. It's it's better than Sultai against aggro. Yeah, but I think it's worse than Sultai against uh, like combo and uh, like Wilderness Reclamation and Team Control. You don't get negates, which is big. I don't know what's going on over there, of course. This looks like a, a starter deck here. Start with the Minari Reapers. <laughs> I'm not bullying the starter deck, we just got paired against it. I'm not doing any bullying. Six, seven, eight. Not much to say about this match here. Sorry, opponent. <clears throat> it's likely we're one and one. We're likely playing against somebody who this is their first match. They're likely O and O. Um, one and one getting paired against O and O happens all the time. But. I paid the thousand, <laughs> thousand gold to jump into the event. Traditional constructed on arena refers to playing best of three and using sideboards. I guess Esper Legends has a little bit more to go with the I gotta do a little bit more uh, to put it up on YouTube it's, it's uploaded I just have to finish the oh, we get to go first that's nice let's do a little bit of typing after legends the game is Magic the Gathering Arena recording date today oh, today's the 12th oops I was typing Typing in 11th.
Hargan Dragon Rider. <laughs> look at that dragon. Like, look how happy that dragon is. It's so happy. All right, just I'm just trading a little bit. Want to hit more land drops and everything. <laughs> Mukton, I, I think the deck's good. I don't think that there's any more one drops to add to the deck, though. I don't think that there are good enough other one drops to be playing. But I think our deck is good. I think that the the anti-aggro mid-range decks like we just played against are going to be matchups that are going to be really difficult to win. But I think that we can I think we can beat other I think we can beat other aggro decks. And in particular, I think our deck is Probably pretty good against uh, control and combo decks. I really like those kind of matchups. With us having eight discard spells and um, early pressure. We have gutter bones in the deck as well. Yeah, Nat, do you have any question about any of them? I can talk about the spoilers. If you had, had a question about one of them. The problem with Conquistadors, yes, you just want to bring the curve down. Um, <laughs> the problem with Conquistadors is Conquistadors, against other decks that play creatures, Conquistadors basically never trades with any creature, being just a 1-2. And that's that's a big problem with the card. It is good at turning on Spectacle, but it, it's, good, it's a good card against spell-heavy decks. Like, if they're not playing creatures, if they're just playing removal spells, Conquistador is just fine there. The problem is, is Conquistador is very bad against other creature decks. You know, two two creatures are pretty common. You know, Diagraph, Diagraph Ghoul does a better job at trading with stuff. Take it. All right. This looks like Teamer Reclamation. I want to draw another land for this Midnight Reaper. For the daily wins, yes, the daily wins just count game wins. So if you win two games, it uh, counts as, you know, so if you win a match, it counts as two games towards the game, the daily wins. I kind of want to just take the two insights, the two chemistry's insights. I don't like them drawing two cards. Two cards is a lot of cards. Well, drawn both, or two of our three cast downs. Their top deck was another insight? Ugh. I thought they were just casting one of their insights from their hand, and then I was like, wait, how do they have so many cards in hand? Ugh. Ugh. Now they have infinite mana. Now they have these infinite cards. Ugh. 
This is bad. Those, that was like as worse as it, the worst it could happen. Them finding yet another insight and then a wilderness reclamation. They that was probably not worth it. They ditched this wilderness reclamation here. I'm pretty sure they should just keep that wilderness reclamation. And then they just have you know even more mana for all these insights. Yeah, like they should just keep that reclamation. Mukton, you you didn't sound demeaning. He didn't. All good. Did I miss the card that somebody wanted to ask about? I never saw it. I think I'm supposed to keep Chupacabra <clears throat> for Niv-Mizzet. Really wish we didn't draw these two cast downs. Really wish we had, like, you know, anything else to put some pressure on the opponent. We'll be sideboarding these out for duresses. Like, imagine if these were duresses, how good this would be. It would have been. Would have been great, Hawkeye. Campus Insight draws so many cards. And it's just free. When you have Wilderness Reclamation, it's just free. It doesn't even cost any mana. Just zero mana draw two. It's really zero mana draw four. At least the good news is they have gone through three chemistry's insights, which is you know like one of their big ways to dig. So that's good news is they're those are gone. Looks like this is just explosion. Hmm. Don't need to sideboard too much. Stop as Kanta, if that, if that matters. So don't love Chupacabra. Don't love Seeker Squire. <laughs> Squire is at least a two-mana creature we get to play. Yeah, I, th I think we just take out Chupacabra. Think I should play Bloodfast? I don't know. Bloodfast against the Explosion deck is kind of asking to get killed out of nowhere. And I feel like the the match, the game's just going to be faster. Yeah, like the game's just going to be faster than whether that matters or not. Just do I want a Walk the Plank over this other Chubacabra? Or Eldest Reborn? Or do I want Spyglass for Ascanta? 
Let me keep the chew. Alright, this time we actually hit our third land drop. It's a very similar hand we had last time. Alright, we need to draw a Diagraph School or a Spawn of Mayhem. Those are our most important cards. You gotta draw one of those. Perfect. Love it. Love it. Alright, so we're taking Coil and Syncopate. Now we can have Spawn of Mayhem next turn. And Spawn's our fast clock. Hopefully spawn gets there. All right, it does. Dun, 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 dun. Well, the hand doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, we had a one drop into double Thoughtseize into Spawn of Mayhem on three. <laughs> yeah, he blinked. Yeah, you blinked game over there. That is that is the insane opening for our deck. That was that was a game right there. I'm kind of liking these Dire Fleet Poisoners, though. I like the, the whole Flash thing. How we got to play around the Counterspell with the Dire Fleet Poisoner. <laughs> you like the Lazav Avatar? That's number one. Lazav kind of looks like a... You know, like a, a rock singer from the late 90s, early 2000s. Alright. No interaction. We just got our clock right now. Yeah, no, none of our eight discard spells. Those are, that's, um, that's what we want to be getting. Wait, Lazav has a sword? Really? I didn't know Lazav had a had a sword. Okay, you're in the way. So Dreadshade's my best play card to play here, but if Dreadshade gets countered, that's kind of bad for us. I think I want to play Dreadshade next turn. Good. Because the other thing about... Well, even next turn, I guess we only turn it into a 4-4. We cannot survive Lava Coil or a kicked um, Shiv and Fire with Dreadshade next turn. All right, well, we have another Dread Shade. All right, well, now they can flip as Kanta next turn. That worked out pretty well where they got to, you know, put it two cards in the graveyard for each of these Sinister Sabotages.
Attack. And uh, now, hopefully this resolves because we can protect Dreadshade from removal spell. Ugh. And the third Sinister Sabotage. And they kept that card on top. No, I haven't made a mono blue deck. No, we'll be doing Grixis discard again tomorrow. Yeah, we'll we'll go with that deck tomorrow. Why does that have to be Phoenix here? Why can't it be Niv Mizzet? It's a phoenix. Yeah, this is probably a good game. This this all went just so well for the opponent. Just every single every single option or opportunity, sorry, every opportunity they had to put a card in the graveyard with all the surveil and, and as Kanta, every single one they put you know, like they found like land they put in the graveyard and then drew a good spell afterwards. Like every single one was, you know, like so they got to flip Ascanta as early as they did. Um, it just everything worked out really, really well for them. We're just in here drawing lands. Like, just the sequence of the cards on top of their library. It was always just like, land. Oh, surveil that to the graveyard. Now draw another good card. And then... And uh, everything. Same with, like, the surveils for the Sinister Sabotages with the Ascantas. Ugh. The second counterspell for the Dreadshade really hurt, and then the third counterspell for the other Dreadshade. That was just a killer. I mean, I think I think Dreadshade can win, could have won this. <clears throat> and then also that this is Phoenix and not Niv Mizzet. I could have just been Niv Mizzet. Just every, basically everything's lining up. Everything lined up. Did not have any of our eight discard spells either. You know. Oh well. It looks like we're gonna be two and two here. Even though I think this matchup's good for us, but you don't win all the matchups. You don't win them all. Uh no, no Vras's contempts. I don't I don't think Contempt is necessarily too slow for the aggro deck. I just... It's like... Contempt is like... Something that I want specifically for... Like Rekindling Phoenix. It's just... There's just not a whole lot of things in the metagame that I want... Contempt for. So we lost to an Abzan um, mid-range deck with that was really anti-aggro, and that's not a matchup I'm expecting to ever win. We came close, we got a game, but you know they're playing all the angels and like find finality, get back the angels, lots of removal, lots of um, creatures with uh, what's that ability like Tithe Taker and Seraph have with uh, Afterlife. 
you know, that that's just a, a really tough matchup for us to get through. You know, Dredge Shade doesn't have doesn't have trample and you know, making opponents chump block with Dread Shade's good, but whenever they just get to like afterlife a bunch and everything. It's kinda of, it's a lot tougher. The the wilderness the team or reclamation matchup I think is a pretty good one for us. We didn't end up winning though, as we saw there. Everything lined up for them game three. Game one was our other one that we lost, and it was kind of because we drew two of the three cast downs, and we just didn't have anything to play. We drew our, our cast downs. We got stuck on lands. We didn't hit our third land drop either for our three drops that game. And by the time I, we did hit the third land, then they had the counter magic for them. I don't know. I think that's a good matchup for us, but you're going to lose sometimes. Um, and that's okay. So talking about some of the cards that we changed, I liked Walk the Plank quite a bit. I'm glad we had this in there. That card felt pretty good. That could be Contempt, but Contempt's just a lot of mana. Um, Elder Shoeborn could be Contempt, but I think I like Elder Shoeborn still. That could be Contempt also, if you know if you really want Contempts. Like Seraph, Seraph of the Scales and Rekindling Phoenix are some difficult cards. But I, I like how our sideboard is. The Spyglass is like our worst card in the sideboard. This is this is probably my least favorite card in the sideboard, honestly, is these Spyglasses. Um, don't know what I'd want to do with those. Because even like against Esper Control, we just don't like to stop Teferi. I don't know if we need that. Some other threat would be nice. Maybe maybe just like a couple Karns. No. Maybe not Karns. I don't know what. Something to think about there. Poisoner though, I actually really liked Poisoner. I'm I'm gonna try Poisoner again the next time. You know, it's only four matches, so not a a very big sample, but um I was certainly happy with Poisoner. Uh, got to flash it in to, to block a Jade Light and help us win a game against Soul Tie that we were going to be losing if we just had like a, a different two drop because they would have just chupacabra my blocker kind of thing. Um, that was really good. We would have been trading with a Carnage Tyrant also, but just it didn't end up happening, but we could have. Um, Stronghold's not that important. We could... That is certainly another way we could go. We could we could move away from Stronghold, and then we could move away from Stronghold and then splash a color, like have eight overgrown tombs and woodland cemeteries and play like a couple find finality in the board. That could honestly be better. But no, Stronghold is really not that important. What do y'all think of what if we just played? I should just typed forest. They'll just both come up. What if we played those? And then in our sideboard for removal heavy decks. And we can even play fine we can even play finality against uh, other creature decks, I guess. But what if we had like two fine finalities for removal heavy decks where we can get some stuff back? And then if, if we want, we have, like, the green mana for finality. That's something. You could play a little bit of green in the deck. Like, you could fit in, like, a, a four mana Vraska kind of thing. Maybe in the sideboard. Like, that that could be, like, a sideboard card. Um, six mana Vraska just costs a whole lot. Um, that's so that's that's certainly something to think about. The other option is splashing blue. 
So besides splashing black, the other option splashing blue and playing hostage taker. Have Gruesome Menagerie in the sideboard for removal heavy decks. It's not so bad. Yeah, blue would let you have counter counter magic. You know, basically, you know how like there's the mono white aggro that splashes blue for like negate? You could do like that same kind of thing with mono black, splash blue. Um, splash red for Judith. I don't know. Our three drop slot's already really good. It's it's fine. Like we don't. It's the two drop slot that's the pro the problem, and splashing for two drops is kind of hard too. I would yeah. I wouldn't play departed deck hand at all. You're just when you're splashing, and you're trying to play the triple color card. You're not going to have that second color on turn two reliably enough uh, to play two drops of another color. No, I don't like Freebooter. Yeah, the three two for for two. Um, yeah, talked we talked about those like at the the beginning of the 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 stream or like the beginning of the match basically, uh, but. Uh, short and sweet is the three two um, is good. Um, whatever the name of that card is, that zombie. It is it is good, but I I wanted to try out, and I I know like that's it's not a bad option at all. But I wanted to try out poisoner because I just don't play poisoner very much, so I wanted to see if if I would like poisoner more. And honestly, I was I was pretty impressed with poisoner, and I could see poisoner being better. Yeah, graveyard marshal. Yeah. Yes, honestly, this could just be playing Hydroid Crisis, honestly. You could, <laughs> if you don't want to go aggro, you could go mid-range, and you could really make, um, I'll discard that for now. You could turn this deck, we know, you know how we have the mono red Crisis? I've certainly thought about that. You could just make, you know, have Chain Willer be the, the black creature, um, Dreadshade, or whatever, and, you know, you play, like, Cast Downs, and treasure map and crisis and karn and you have like chupacabra and then like eldest reborn or doom whisperer and uh you can you know you could this could be just a mono black mid-range deck with crisis like that's certainly a possible like that <laughs> that's something you could do you could definitely do that where like your two mana card how this deck doesn't really have good two mana cards like daredevil is like really like a four or five drop and so how, how black the the problem with black is not having good two drops if you play a, a mid-range deck like this you may not need like the good two drops kind of thing this deck's good yeah we've we've had good success with this deck this monitor crisis um no kite tail free booter is not good again all right, so that's uh, mono black aggro. We're gonna keep trying it out. Uh, I think we kind of, you know, we went two and two, but the deck still feels pretty good. We ran into a, a real bad matchup where we came pretty close to winning. The game three was kind of close, even though we molded the five and they kept seven, and that was that was one of our worst matchups. And then we lost to a good matchup where we just uh, didn't draw very well, opponent drew well, kind of thing. We lost to a good matchup, and you know that that happens. You don't win all your matchups, but the deck still feels pretty good. We're still trying different cards out. Um, again, I was I was happy with Poisoner, and pretty happy with the sideboard. The biggest thing I'm not happy with is Spyglass, and I don't know exactly what I want there. Again, if our if our if the big struggle is beating some mid range decks that have a good amount of removal and other creatures and things like that. I don't know exactly what I want in that kind of matchup. I think that we're already okay against control, and I think that we're good against Reclamation, and I think we can be pretty good against other aggro decks. Um, Spawn and Dreadshade and, and cards and Chupacabra, like those cards are pretty good against other aggro decks. It's just card decks like Sultai or like that random Abzan deck we beat. Or sorry, that we uh, got matched up against. 
those are going to be difficult matches, and I just don't really know exactly what to do with the sideboard for that right now. I need to kind of play the deck more and, and uh, you know, feel more how the games play out and everything. All right, but if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, hope you hit the subscribe button. But thanks for watching some Mono Black Aggro, and I will see you for the next one.